Okay, next with Bootstrap, I want to talk about how you can add buttons and how you can add icons. Now, buttons are built into Bootstrap. We have lots of button classes. And up here at the top, we're going to talk about how to build things like this. So the button classes are built in. We've got BTN, 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 BTN. These are all my buttons that I've got up at the top here. These first four, those are all buttons built with Bootstrap. It's a button element and it's got the class BTN. The colors come from these additional classes that we add on. BTN primary, dark, success, info, danger, warning, uh, light, muted. Uh, there's a link, sorry, not muted. Uh, there's a button link class that makes it look like it's an anchor tag instead of an actual button. You can use anchors or buttons to create any one of these with these classes. Now, additionally, there are classes like BTN block. And if I add that class in here, you can see that the button tries to take up the entire width of its parent element. Whatever the parent is, it spreads out. Now, if you don't want the whole thing, we've also got BTN large. BTN large gives us a bigger button than the default one. There's also a BTN small class. So if you want your button to be smaller than the average, like this. So we can downsize, we can upsize. There's an outline button class as well. So we can say, instead of button primary, we could say BTN outline primary, like that. Turns it into this style of button with the outline. Now you'll notice here, I've got this little icon and it changed colors. So when I'm mousing over it, I get the colors. When I go back to that BTN just primary, it's going to be white and I haven't changed anything to do with the icon itself. All right, so let's take a look at how we can add icons into these buttons. That's pretty much all there is to, that you really need to know about buttons. You can override the colors yourself in your own CSS, but let's look at the icons now. Now there's nothing that comes with Bootstrap, but there's a whole bunch of these other icon tool sets out there that you can use, icon frameworks that you can use and combine with Bootstrap. I've picked Font Awesome here as one of the, this is one of the more common ones. You can also do uh, Iconic, there's uh, Material Design icons, a whole bunch of others. If you're on the Bootstrap website actually, it will, if you go to the icons page, they'll give you a long list of potential icon sets that you get. Now, Font Awesome, Iconic, and Material Design, all three of these have a similar approach that you can use, and that is you bring the CSS in. So I have a link to the CSS file. This CSS file is actually loading a font. The font itself has the icons built into it. Every character in that font set is a different icon. So we bring that in. It means that I can add text to my page, but every letter that I'm putting in there is an icon. So with this link added to my page above the bootstrap one, above my own CSS, we want to have it up at the top. We can now add these I tags. Now these are the old HTML uh, version 3.2 uh, icon, no, sorry, not icon, italic tags. You would wrap this around an element if you wanted the text to be italic. We're not using it for that purpose. And if you want to be really truly semantically proper, these should be spans, but I just looks a lot better. I looks like it's an icon tag. It looks, it's a lot less to type. So that's why people tend to use I instead of span. So there we go. I've got my I element here. And then there's two classes I have to add for, this is for font awesome. Iconic and uh, material design use similar styles. So we have this first class, which is font awesome now, the S was added as part of the version 5, I believe, of Font Awesome. Originally, it was FA. So if you see any documentation about putting the class FA in there, it's pointing to an older version of Font Awesome. So just check to see which version that you've got. I've got version 5.5 here. With version 5.5, I need to use FAS or FAB. So down here at the bottom. These last two, one of them's FAS and one of them's FAB. The FAB font 
This one has to do with branding. So if you're bringing in one of the icons for a brand like Apple or Amazon or Google or Chrome, those ones start with FAB and then the other ones are all FAS. So things like an arrow, those are just a symbol. Amazon, that's a brand. So FAS or FAB. Then the second class is, what's the name of the icon that you want? So on the Font Awesome site, there is a big, big, long list. Here, I'll actually, I'll open it up for you. Okay, here we go. Here's the Font Awesome site. And uh, right now I've got just the free ones selected. There's a filter here. You can say I want the free ones or the paid ones. There's a paid version that has a lot more fonts, but for free, you're getting over 1400. That's pretty good. So we can take any one of these. Let's say the address book. I want the address book. What I would do in here, I know this is pretty small text, but address book is the name. So I would come in here. Actually, let's do it on the second one. So an I tag and in the class FAS and then FA dash address dash book. That's the name of it. So I come back in here, refresh, and there we have it. There's the little address book icon. And just because there's no room between this, the, the text is touching this. So it's a good idea to add an extra space inside of there. With that space, we get that separation between the icon and the text. So that's all there is to adding an icon here. Now I've put a couple of icons here with one of them with a, an effect on the hover. So let's take a look at what we can do in, in our CSS with these. So here's my CSS file that I have attached. This is the main.css file. There we go. There's my buttons and my icons. FA arrow circle up. That is this one right here. Now what I've done is I've changed the font size to make it much larger. You can put any size you want. I can say I want six REMs or 82 pixels, whatever size you want. And there it is. It resizes. And that's all it is. That's all it takes to change the size of one of these icons is just change the font size. Because remember, what we're doing is we're bringing in a font and then we're styling that font. So you want a color on it? Let's put a color on it. So we'll add uh, green, yellow. There we go. There's the color for our arrow up. There it is. And border. I put a one pixel border around it. Can change this to a five pixel border. There we go. It's got a five pixel border on it. Border radius 50% makes it a circle. Padding separates the background from the border. If I took this out, you can see that this border is now directly against the edge there. Or I guess there's a little tiny, I guess it would depend on the font size, how much of that white you see. If we bump this back down to say three REM, there we go. Now you're not gonna really see much of that white. It's pretty faint. Okay. Um, hover. So I've changed the color and I've also rotated it by 180 degrees. I could make that something different. I could make it 90 degrees. So when I mouse over it, now it's pointing to the right. Now, most icons, you're not going to want to rotate. If you wanted to put a transition on this, this is kind of hard to see. So I'm going to make this sky blue. See if that stands out a little bit better. That's a bit better. There we go. Now we could add a transition. With the transition, we can say I want it to take 0.5 seconds and we'll just do linear. And the property that we want to change is the transform property. So if we're going to do a transform, a transition on the transform, we need to have it in both places. We'll say zero degrees at the start, 90 degrees at the finish. All right, let's refresh this. There we go. And you can see we're rotating that. There's a transition. So you might want an, an effect like that sometimes when you're uh, adding an icon. Very easy to do, just like you would on any element on your page. And then the last one with the Amazon logo, I've used here BG Dark. This is one of the built-in bootstrap classes. So BG dark, that gave me the dark background here. So I've got the black 
or almost black background. If I remove these, there we go. This is what I've got for the logo. This is the actual icon. And then BG Dark. That's from Bootstrap. That gives me the black background, but it's touching the edges of the logo here, so I didn't want that. So I used the built-in padding class. So padding on all four sides of 0.5 REMs. There we go. There's my Amazon logo, styled a little bit better now. A little bit better. And all I had to do was put the color gold onto the icon itself. So that is the text part of it. And then this was the size. All right, so that gives you a lot to play with. Hope that all makes sense. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. If you found this useful, please share it. And as always, thanks for watching.